Got that? A bit more, a bit more right to the top. Every time I went to Australia, I loved it more. Whoa, it was yeah. me. Hey. The way of life, the, the casualness, the favourite Aussie expression is, she'll be right, mate. They're saying, don't give me a hard time, get off my back. And oh, it didn't take long to find that out. That's awesome. It's the greatest country in the world by far. And distillery boss Michael is all shook up as his business takes a new twist. Drink up and have fun. Good, cheers. Thank you. On the coast is the Tambourine Mountain Distillery, a family business that British expat Michael Ward has built up over nearly 20 years. Look at that colour. It's natural colour. The distillery specialises in organic spirits and liqueurs, and hundreds of tourists flock to the tasting room every year, where Michael enjoys taking centre stage. It's made from wattle seed, and we've roasted the seeds. That's what we've done. That's how we've... There's so many. That's how, so it's totally Australian, is it? And you're from England. Yes. Are you getting off from England? Yes. I can't believe it. I cannot believe this. Where, where are you guys from? From the southeast, from an area called Essex. I was born in Ipswich in Suffolk. Oh, okay. Silly Suffolk. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Crazy. You think you come all this bloody way to get away from and crying out loud they're all here. Yeah. Bloody room of palms, mate. Oh, really? How awesome is that? Michael moved from Suffolk to Tasmania in 1964, leaving his career as a ladies hairdresser to become a property developer. When the family moved to Tambourine Mountain, the lush surroundings inspired Michael to start a new business. When we came here in 92, it was just a rundown avocado orchard and, and citrus trees. Nothing was here. All these trees here I planted. For probably 18 months I just worked every single day. I, I'd start at 5.36 in the morning, go till dark, and look what's happened. I mean, it's just everything here grows so incredibly quickly. And it's just a lovely, lovely place to live. This is lemon myrtle. There's 94% citral in this leaf, which is more than in a lemon. And we've made lemon myrtle liqueur, we've made a, an Australian herbal liqueur with lemon myrtle in it, and we've made a lemon myrtle vodka. Fantastic. Tree, this tree is indigenous to Australia, only grows in Australia. The distillery has won over 140 international awards, but Michael still takes an old-school approach to the business of making booze. Whoa, look at that, eh? Isn't that awesome? This is the first still that we ever made. It, um, it's a little 80 litre copper pot still, which is fantastic. And we heat it with gas, as you can see. And can you hear all bubbling and gurgling away and farting and carrying on? Isn't that bloody brilliant? It's a system. I've got the little ball thing in the top, to, you know, to, to control the flow, which is fantastic. I think it's awesome. The steam turns to liquid, which is alcohol, and that comes out of here straight into here. Michael's journey from working-class Suffolk lad to celebrated Aussie distiller has required some adjustments over the years. When I very first arrived in Australia way long millions of years ago, it was a culture shock to start with, but it didn't take me long to chuck my long trousers off and put my shorts on. And I've, I've never ever worn long pants since. I've worn shorts all my Australian life. You've never worn a pair of long pants never in worn, Australia? No, don't wear them. Don't even have any. Certainly don't have a suit. Yeah. Um, they're women's legs, aren't they? Women would be proud to own a pair of legs like that, but I don't give a bugger. Many expats see Australia as a land of opportunity that rewards hard work. Distillery owner Michael certainly hasn't been held back by his humble beginnings. You know, we came from a reasonably poor background, working class background, certainly no money, no dollars. Any money that I, I had, I had to work myself to three or four jobs to get some money. But now he's thinking about his legacy, and his optimistic son Alex and daughter Sonia will keep the family business thriving. It's funny, I think as he's gotten older, he's calmed down a lot. He's definitely mellowed in his old age. Well, he'd hate to hear me calling him old. Sometimes we call him the old man. He's like, I don't like this old man business. I'm not an old man. 
I'm like, well, you're certainly not a young man. <laughs> the typical person, the Aussie certainly, well, I, retirement is, is, is sitting in a, in a chair watching TV with a beer in your hand. Crikey, is it going to be anything worse? That'd be terrible. Sonia is hoping to make her mark on the business by pushing their products into the cocktail bar market. She and local cafe owner Ashley are planning a special cocktail party to launch a new joint venture. A bit of our chilli vodka would go nice in there. See, we could serve that in a gumboot. I'm a bit of a control freak. I haven't given it away at all. Not yet. She's got to earn it. I mean, I've built this building, I've built this building, I've built this building. And, and, you know, with our own bare hands, we've created this business out of nothing. And she's not ready for that total thing yet. And she, she'll be the first to acknowledge that. Australia has been so good to us, and I love this place so much. It, there's very little class distinction, and none of this up yourself like bloody England, and the weather's fantastic. It's the greatest country in the world by far. No question about it. Up on Tambourine Mountain, it's the night of the cocktail bar opening. Come in. Don't be bashful, just come in. The great and the good of the mountain have been invited to sample a cocktail menu specially designed by Michael's daughter, Sonia. And of course, the distillery's products are the vital ingredients. Tonight is like the official opening of the, of the new cocktail bar at the kitchen table. <laughs> On behalf of all the freeloaders tonight, who <laughs> we wish you all the very, very best. And, and the more successful you are, the more money we'll make because we're supplying the booze. So that's all exciting. Yeah. <laughs> you drink up and have fun. Good, cheers. Yeah. Thank you. The evening has been a success, and Michael is confident the family business will be in safe hands. When we're too old and crotchety and we can't be involved with it, although I can't ever see me not being involved with it, I'll, I'll die working because I love it. She's going to be a wonderful ambassador and um, it's working really, really well. I know he's proud, yeah. He won't tell me, but I can tell. He sort of get, catches my and you know, gives me a little wink or gives me a little kiss. Everyone's got a drink, everyone's eating, everyone's dressing up and looking great, so I think it's success.